Good morning scientists in training. Cosmic and Academy is proud to invite your class to a school-wide competition. You are watching this video because your teacher has agreed to let you compete. There will be a series of challenges and tests that will reveal to me who the very best and brightest students in the galaxy really are. Your performance as an individual and as a class will gain your solar system points. At the very end of this semester, we will see which classes are champion. That class will win the reward of their choice. Do not waste this chance to earn the respect of the galaxy and the chance to be a scientific hero. The first task will be measurement Olympics. Study, practice, and prepare. Develop the knowledge and skills needed to be victorious. Teachers, I leave you to it. Good luck scholars. The sound of a school-wide competition made Amelia really excited. She couldn't help but wonder what the reward might be. The headmaster said it would be up to the winner to choose. She thought about a bunch of money to help her family go to amusement parks. Except, she decided that if she won her choice would be to help the people of Earth. Welcome. As you can see before you, there are mystery bags. Inside the bag with your name on it, you will find an object from your home world. The four students stepped up to their bags excitedly. I can't wait. Me neither. I already know what it is. Nothing surprises me. Stop lying, Gil. Can we look, Ms. Lagrange? Yes, my brave scholars. Look at the objects I've got for you. Amelia reached into her bag and pulled out a brand new shoe. She recognized the brand. She knew that this kind of shoe cost too much for her to ever afford. It was also, exactly the right size. Gil pulled out a liquid that had a bright red glow to it. He seemed to recognize it. Wow, it's the most effective muscle growing protein drink on my home world. One sip of this, and your muscles get 10% stronger. Do you have one that makes the brain 10% smarter? No. Why? Didn't think so. Owls are be nice. Gil realized that Olza was making fun of him and growled. <sighs> Olsa picked up his object from his mystery bag and smiled. Wow, a heat suit. This baby can keep you warm even in the chilliest of winters. I'll show you a chill. Gil pumped his fist and looked angry. Now boys, I signed us up for this competition. Was it wrong to think that you were capable of working together? No, ma'am. No ma'am. Now shake hands and forgive one another. The boys reluctantly obeyed. Sorry, Olsa. Sorry. Gil. Now it was Mika's turn to draw the object from her wow. bag. Wow. When she did, everyone was so excited. It's an asteroid drone. We ride these around the neighborhood from one asteroid to another. How do you like the objects I picked for you? Amazing, but where's the other shoe? I have the other at my desk. For now I want you to measure the length of your object. The children all ran to get science tools. Try to measure them without science equipment. The scholars looked at each other in confusion. But how, Ms. Lagrange? Try to figure out a way by yourself. Amelia thought and racked her brain to figure out how she might measure the length of the shoe. Should she use her finger? She measured it out by putting one finger and then adding another. Finally, she figured out that her shoe was six fingers long. She ran up to her teacher and yelled. I finished. My shoe is six fingers long. Six fingers. My oh my. Let me see. Which finger? This one. Amelia held up her finger. But I don't have the same finger, so how am I to understand how long that finger is? I'm not sure, Ms. Lagrange. That's okay, dear. Kidos, not knowing is okay. But giving up is not. Your brains need the challenge. Keep trying. Amelia was once more trying to figure out how to complete the task. And how would she be able to communicate that to Ms. Lagrange? She felt highly uncomfortable not knowing the answer. Think, Amelia. Think. Olza was the next brave soul to attempt an answer. My suit is three arms long, Ms. Lagrange. Ms. Lagrange measured the suit and said. It looks like it is two arms long. What? I agree. Can't we both be correct? So your suit is two arms long and three arms long. That's confusing, Olza. It's because all of our arms and legs are different sizes. Miss Lagrange, I think we need help. I am so impressed. You are extremely hardworking and clever children. You now see how important it is to use the same units of measurement. Which means a single way of communicating a measurement. 
Ms. Lagrange, on our world, we all used the same measuring system. Maker is exactly right. Here at Cosmic and Academy, we use the metric system. That means we all use the same tools with same units. When we measure length, we can use any of these. Amelia felt sure that she knew the name of at least two of the tools, but Olza quickly blurted out. That's a ruler and that's a tape measurer. Those were the two she knew. She crossed her arms in frustration. Correct. Anyone know what this one is called? I've never seen one like that. I would have been surprised if you had known its name. This is called a meter stick because it is one meter long. Each of these little tip marks represent centimeters. For length we use meters and centimeters as our units. One meter is 100 centimeters long. So this stick is how long in centimeters? Amelia did the math in her head. If the stick is called a meter, and one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. The stick is 100 centimeters long. Bingo let me see your shoe, Emilia. Here is how we do this, kiddos. We line up the shoe with the first mark on the meter stick. And we see how far the shoe reaches on the meter stick. Look for yourself. The big lines represent plus 10 centimeters. Can you count by 10? Let's go. 10, 10 20, 20, 30, 30 40, 40, 50, 50 60, 60, 70, 70 80, 80, 80, 90, 90 and, 100. and 100. Excellent. Now, if you look closer, there are these smaller lines. What do you suppose these mean? Maybe those lines mean plus one. I think she's right. Look, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Good job, Gil and Mika. Thanks. Thanks. But I can do even better. Go ahead then since you're so smart. The shoe is longer than 30. See, it passes the line. And since I see that it reaches three lines past 30, all I have to do is add 3 to 30 and I get 33. Everyone looked at Ms. Lagrange to see if he was correct. I am very impressed. I told you. But, you forgot to add the units. What do you mean? 33 what? 33 centimeters. Yes, bingo was his memo. Now if I move the shoe away and I say, the shoe is 33 centimeters long, can you point to that on the meter stick? The four students all pointed correctly. Excellent, my smarty pants students. I get it. That means when I measure the length of my shoe, I can tell you exactly how long it is and you'll understand me. Exactly. Time for practice. Ms. Lagrange had the students find four items from the science lab to measure and then record in their science journals. They all went around the room and found various items. Amelia was intent on measuring them correctly. Keep practicing scholars. Jill, remember to start your measurements at the first line not at the edge of the ruler. Sorry, Ms. Lagrange. At the end of class, Amelia asked if she could bring the ruler home to practice. She measured her kitchen chair, her sister's arm, her dog's tail, and just about everything she could. Her auntie, sister, mother, and father all watched her in confusion. What's gotten into her? I'm practicing for an important competition at school. What you mean at school? School's at home. I mean virtual competition from home, of course. She couldn't bring herself to tell her parents that she was attending the best school in the galaxy along with thousands of aliens. Her father would freak out. He was always talking about how aliens were real, and he'd love to meet them. If she ever told them, he would come to the school and make a complete fool of her. No way. She backed out of the room and decided to be more careful. The next day at Cosmicon, the students were absolutely stunned to find a giant pan balance in the classroom. Ms. Lagrange was sitting on it and said, Good morning, kiddos. Whoa, Ms. Lagrange, this is so cool. I'm glad you're impressed. Now let's get down to business. The balance measures mass, but what is that? It's how much something weighs. That is a common mistake. Mass is how much matter is in something. Or how much matter something has. Now, Alza, teach it back to us. Mass is how much matter something has. Good. Everyone, what is mass? How much matter something has. How much matter something has. How much matter is in something. What are these tools called? Hand, Hand balance. balance. Pan Hand balance. balance. And it compares masses. What do I mean by that? 
Well, when we compare two different things, we're looking to see how they are different. So, we put one object here, and the other object over there, then we see which object has more mass. If an object has more mass, it will cause that side of the pan balance to drop, while the object with less mass will rise up. If the two objects have the same mass, neither side will go up or down. They will stay balanced like so. Let's start by comparing a pumpkin and a watermelon. The kids looked up and were amazed to find a pumpkin and a watermelon floating in the air. Emilia, step up and predict. Which has more mass? The watermelon. What about it? I think the watermelon has more mass. More mass than? Start over. Remember, speaking in complete sentences makes all the difference to the judges at the Measurement Olympics. Sorry. Um, I think the watermelon has more mass than the pumpkin. Wait, did you just say judges? I did. All four students shook fearfully. Who are they going to be? The headmaster and other school administrators. Also, many of the older students. The students shook even more fearfully when they learned that older students will be judging them. Fear is a great motivation. Use it to work even harder. Now let's see if your prediction is correct. Ms. Lagrange said and then pressed her button. The pumpkin and watermelon dropped into the pan balance. The watermelon side of the balance fell and the side with the pumpkin rose into the air. Was I right? Absolutely. The class cheered. Let's make this interesting. Yes. Of course. Okay. Why don't we compare two of you? Who wants to give it a try? All four hands shot up, excitedly. Ms. Lagrange laughed. Let's let the name we'll decide. Spin the wheel, Jill. Gil flexed his muscles and spun the wheel. The wheel crashed and broke with a loud bang. You really are a terrifying individual. Olza commented as he inspected the damage. Have you ever considered football? What's that? Focus children. Sorry, Ms. Lagrange. I've been doing double workouts. It's quite alright, dearie. I'll just call on someone. Emilia and Olza go first. Amelia and Olza both floated up to the pan balance. Amelia cried because she was so high above the ground. It reminded her of the terrifying rides at an amusement park. The scary rides that drop you from a great height. She felt butterflies fluttering in her stomach. Don't worry. You won't fall. Technology really is a wonderful thing. Maker and Jill. Predict. Who has more mass? I predict that Amelia will have more mass than Olza. No way, Olza will have more mass than Amelia. Olza and Amelia were placed into each a side of the pan balance. Amelia's side dropped and Olza's side rose into the air. Look, Jill, I was right. Amelia has more mass than Olza. True, Mika. Good job. Next, it was Mika and Gil's turn. They both were lifted high into the air and then placed into the pan balance. To everyone's utter surprise, Mika's side dropped and Gil's rose into the air. Gil thought for certain that he would have more mass than Mika. He was shocked, to say the least. That was a real blast. Now comes the even greater challenge. This will be very important for you if you want to win the school competition. You will need to measure the mass of an object using the pan balance. Ms. Lagrange clapped her hand and the lights in the room shut off. And there was only a single light on a small table where a smaller pan balance sat, with small cubes of all sorts of sizes and colors. Last class, you picked up an item from the mystery bag. Remember? Yes, Ms. Lagrange. I'm going to show you how to measure mass on a pan balance. Tonight you will each take one home with you to practice. Ms. Lagrange, I thought you already showed us how to use this tool. Not quite, Maker. We compared the mass of two objects. That shows you that one object has more mass than another. Now you will learn to precisely measure the amount of mass in an item. What are those? These are the units that we use for mass. They are gram cubes. The smallest cubes, the red ones are 1 gram. The bigger, blue cubes are 5 grams, the yellow cubes are 10 grams. All you have to do is put your object in on one side. You see how the side with the object has dropped. Your job when measuring on a pan balance is to add gram cubes to the other side until it balances out. Then you add up all the gram cubes and the total is the amount of mass of the object. 
Would anyone like to try? I would. Of course, dearie. You got this, Amelia. Amelia scooped a big pile of gram cubes and dropped them into the balance and the apple flew out of the other side. Oh no. Amelia cried and hung her head in embarrassment. It's okay, Amelia. The three classmates patted her on the shoulder. I agree. That was fun. Take it slow, this time. Start off with one piece at a time. Amelia put in one ten gram cubes at a time until she got to forty grams. Then Ms. Lagrange instructed her to add a five gram cube until the side with the gram cubes started to level off. The class cheered. It's not quite level, though. Amelia pointed out. She added another one gram cube. Now, add up all the gram cubes to find the mass of the apple. Four ten gram cubes, plus the a five gram cube, and a one gram cube. That's 46 grams for the apple, Ms. Lagrange. Outstanding effort today, scholars. But look at the time, kiddos. Off to your homes. Don't forget to take your balances and practice. Amelia didn't need to hear that instruction twice. She scooped up her pan balance and gram cubes and hurried home with nothing on her mind but mastering the pan balance. She measured a baseball and her pet. She wanted those shoes very much, but in her heart, she was beginning to love science more and more. Stay tuned to see how she performs in the Cosmic Honor Academy school-wide measurement Olympics in the next episode.